so I watched season two of The Witcher and uh, it's not looking too good, Doc. Doesn't rhyme. All good predictions rhyme. Problem is they want to divide development and narrative importance between all these different characters, but the truth is people, including myself, don't give a fuck. This isn't Game of Thrones where the main protagonists are constantly evolving and shifting. This is the story about a powerful man that Destiny chooses as the protector of a very powerful young girl. It's your basic chosen one archetypal story, man. Like Captain America or Ben 10 or Harry Potter. Speaking of which, a friend of mine named Phoebe who shall remain unnamed pointed out how similar the show is to Harry Potter and <laughs> now I can't unsee it. We have a main trio of adventurous characters. Two of the three are in a haram relationship. The protagonist has strong and wise mentors with beards. The protagonist has mommy issues and is also an orphan. Tell me, at least you didn't know this before you left me on his doorstep. The protagonist's best friend is the comedic relief. The, the best friend is a ginger. The protagonist has a British act. Okay, this that's too much, man. Also, this show is so prevalent in feminist politics that journalists are saying that people watch it for the feminism. The Witcher may center a male hero, but it stands on the strength and vulnerabilities of its women. Because season two allows its women to have it all by showcasing a wide range of female empowerment, rage, chaos, and love, it sets up season three to transform The Witcher into a truly feminist show. Haha, oh, dude, let's go! That's exactly what was missing from my life! This is the most delusional thing I've ever seen. The only reason I watch The Witcher is because of the big juicy muscular guy with a deep voice who fucks bitches and slays monsters and has one genuine love interest and mommy issues. Not because I'm deeply interested in what the one-dimensional uninteresting women in a fantasy show would do in positions of power and hopes of ambition. Do I look like I fucking care? I never saw a fringulous character as anything more than a pretentious narcissist. The same goes for the elven female leader who can't make a single fucking good decision. Also, this is Fringilla from the game, and this is Fringilla from the TV show. <sighs> the only female characters I like on this show are Yennefer and Siri, and I suspect that won't be for long because they'll probably make Siri's character gay, just like how they made the girl from The Last of Us gay, just for inclusivity. You know Hollywood has been known to have that inclination and they love forcing identity and gender politics into stuff that dudes like. So characters keep showing up randomly to wherever the plot needs them. We have no sense of time or distance because characters get from one place to another in a matter of minutes. I've missed you too. What are you doing here? We don't have time, we need to go. Are you sure? Yes. The feminist fuel political subplots are boring because I can tell they're trying to create a Queen Daenerys, but they can't. The villain this season was an alien lady who just wanted to go back to her sphere. Not a very compelling antagonist in my opinion. And lastly, we don't get to see Geralt's rock hard abs, man. No homo, by the way. Yeah, with all that put on its plate, I'll give this season a seven out of 10, mainly because I love Henry Cavill, no homo, by the way. And the CGI fights were pretty cool. Again, no homo, by the way. And yes, Gear forced a few laughs out of me. Always so emotional. And it's just yap, yap, yap with you sometimes. Oh, Yaskia, I'm so sad and complicated. Shut up, Yaskia. You shut up. That's a perfect impression of you, by the way. And, uh, Yennefer's pretty as heck. Goddamn, bro, look at them titties. <laughs>